Hey there, you're watching Bare Knuckle Binder. Welcome to the channel. I uh, really appreciate you tuning in. Uh, today I'm going to show you a technique to get an old motor started that should start, but for some reason just doesn't seem like it's, it's going to fire off. So when you're working on a motor, obviously you need fuel and you need fire, and this is dealing with a fire situation. This is part of a video that I wish I had put into, or I should say I wish I had time to have included in the rescue of the 1955 R120 out of Arkansas almost two years ago with my buddy Bill. But we have this motor here um, out of a 57 International A170. And I am in Wisconsin right now. My dad's in the back, so he can uh, help out and shout directions and, and yell at me when I'm doing it wrong. But uh, anyway, I've got some interesting plans for this motor. We'll see if they pan out, but it is doing the same thing exhibiting the same qualities that the R120 was was giving me. So I'm going to walk through it and I'm going to show you how to get this thing started. All right, before we get too far into this, this motor is a Super Black Diamond 282. Uh, it's born out of the, I believe the FBC was the motor from the 30s that this is based on. And then in the 40s, they were the Blue Diamonds. And then in the early 50s, it got change to the super black diamond the thing about these to identify them you can tell that they always have the, the distributor that sticks up over the valve cover instead of down there on the side like every other international inline six motor has and this is the only inline six international motor where the rotor actually spins clockwise instead of counterclockwise so Handy information to have if you're trying to get one of these running. Everything about this motor is actually pretty clean. It's pretty dirty on the outside, obviously. This thing turns over. It has good compression. The carb is clean enough for at least a fire. And I'm not getting any spark. You can see here on the coil connections, this is just like the classic twisted up wire wrapped and then, you know, tightened down in there. Just pretty much some BS. So I'll go through here and clean it all up. Need a, maybe a new distributor cap, but the points aren't looking super great. That could look a lot better than that. That is some weapons grade engine disabling right there. So I'll just clean this up. It's a pretty slick wire nut there, not suggested. All right, so one of the handiest tools that I've found for cleaning up old ignitions to get a motor running out of the field is a cordless Milwaukee Dremel or I guess rotary tool or whatever you want to call it uh, with a little wire brush on it. And this way you can get inside the posts of the distributor cap and you can save a distributor cap out in the field. This one's actually really clean. I think I actually cleaned this one up already in my garage. However, if you're going to do this, don't run it on that little button. Just leave that thing alone because that is made out of carbon and it will just disintegrate if you run a wire brush on it. However, so now I'm just going through I've cleaned up this, I'm about to clean up the coil posts here, and then I'm actually going to pull the points out instead of filing them, which you can do that and it'll work just fine, but uh, if I file them, it you can never actually get it perfectly straight. So what I like to do is I like to actually take the points completely out and use a wire brush on them and it seems to burnish them, which works a lot better in the long run instead of filing. So that's what I'm going to get after that right now. don't look so good just want to say real quick you don't have to have this thing go super fast and definitely wear eye protection because these things will throw tiny little wires and you can get them in your eyes ask me how i know So that's looking pretty good. That is definitely good enough to fire. So we'll, uh, we'll put it back in there. Another thing to keep an eye on, on these points is the rubbing block that rides on the cam of the distributor shaft here. And they can wear down. 
if they are not, and it, they definitely will wear down if they're not lubricated correctly. So there's actually a special cam grease that you can put on it, but if you can't find that, if you're out in the field trying to do this, uh, wheel bearing grease will do just fine. Just don't use too much because you don't want it flinging off and getting on the points. All right, so we've cleaned with the distributor here. Um, you can see in here, we just took the time when we pulled the whole breaker plate out and I mean, it's really easy to do. There's two screws here where the clips are and there's one screw in the back. It's a typical Delco distributor setup. And this whole thing just pulls out. It was pretty dirty on top, so we just cleaned it off with some brake cleaner and wiped it clean. Uh, you saw me cleaning up the points. They're ready to go. I grease the lobes. Uh, and I went through here and I've cleaned up all, all the contacts everywhere. I took this completely apart and cleaned everything. That's something you can easily do in a junkyard or out wherever this thing may be sitting. Uh, I went through and I cleaned up the contact for the rotor. That's just a heat mark. I tried to, I tried to run some wire wheel on that, but it doesn't come off. It's just a heat mark. So that's good to go. Um, over here, we've got the solenoid. I cleaned that up, cleaned up the, the cables and the wires. Every time you take apart anything electrical, your secondary objective is to just get all your contacts clean. So that's what I've done there. And for running a starter, instead of having a key and a switch, uh, we've actually got different jumpers that my dad, both my dad and I have made over the years. And this has a push button on it. So you hit the push button. You can see, like I said on this motor, this is the only inline six international motor where the rotor spins clockwise. All right, so if you're not used to doing electrical work on stuff, this is something that anybody can do. You really don't have to know much about electricity. This is a multimeter. And when you're testing resistance, you're going for that little horseshoe shaped guy right there. That's a symbol for ohms and ohms is how you measure resistance. So nobody has the time or patience to sit there and watch me go through all six of these and the coil wire. So I'll just pull number one and I'll show you how it works. So you got this end. Oh, and you got this end. You can see her in there. Now you got to touch the metal on each of these. All right, so on the meter here, you can see that this this cable is running about six and a half K on resistance. Now six and a half K means, well, there you go, seven. I mean, it's jumping around a little bit, but that means instead of less than half of an ohm, it's over 7,000 ohms, which is an insane amount of resistance for a spark plug wire. It won't run like that. So the problem with these is that they are corroded and they just build up resistance over time. So what we've got to do is we've got to go through, we've got to peel off these, these fittings, cut off a little bit of wire and gets down to some fresh cable. It works, it takes a while, but you can get a motor to run doing this. So uh, my buddy Bill's R120 that we saved in a, a previous video in Arkansas, that's how I got the thing to run and then I drove it I think like 400 miles home. So that's, uh, that's what we're gonna do now. And I'll go through and I'll peel these fittings off and uh, we'll make it work. All right, so now that we've got the distributor all cleaned up, I took the points out to clean them up. So now we have to regap them. You can see here the bumper where it rides on the cam lobe there. We've got to move the motor until the points open up before we can gap them because they have to be right on the peak of that lobe about it right there right I'll go one more time right about there so on international points I prefer to have it 19 to 20 thousandths as a point gap You just do that until you feel a slight drag on it. And you tighten her down. I 
I could have replaced the uh, the condenser here with the super not recommended wire nut on it, but I figured I'm trying to prove a point here. So we'll get this thing to fire with that. All right, so I've gone through, I've cleaned up some more wires. With copper cord wires, you want to get it down to less than half of an ohm of resistance. On silicone core, if you get down in the three or 4,000 range, you're pretty good. Maximum allowable resistance for a silicon core. Uh, Fargo pick, yeah. So the maximum allowable resistance for a silicone cord spark plug cable is 12,000 ohms per foot. Luckily, we're way under that. Uh, but having gone through and cleaned up all the connections in the ignition system and on the starter and in the distributor, cleaned up these cables, let's see what she'll do. Now for an ignition switch, like I said, we're just running jumper cables. Just running jumper cables and then we have this for our, our key. So put a little bit of gas in the carb. Let's see what she'll do. Put that up in the coil. Let's do that again. That was fun, huh? Hell yeah. Take it all. All right. Stay tuned because I have a super cool thing coming up of what we're going to put this motor into. So if you've been watching my videos before, you probably saw that this is one of the many motors that was in my garage. I've been slowly cleaning out the garage, getting it ready to get back into the nine foot bed uh, restoration that I've been working on. So that should be a good winter project. But this thing is going into a truck that I have not shown on the channel yet. That said, if you dig what I'm doing here, you should check out my Instagram, Bare Knuckle Binder. And uh, if you have a minute and you like what we're doing, you should uh, like and subscribe. That'll help me out a lot. So I'll see you in the next video and thanks for watching.